Welcome to today's podcast. Our topic today is Lion Tamer, five ways to tell if your spouse is lying with internationally recognized speaker and New York Times bestseller, Janine Driver. I'm Rebecca Zung. And I'm Susan Guthrie. So we are excited today to be talking to the lion tamer, Janine Driver. She is a New York Times bestselling author. As Rebecca mentioned, she has two books, You Can't Lie to Me and You Say More Than You Think. Um, You've actually, you've seen her on Dr. Oz, on NBC's Today Show, ABC's Good Morning America, and CBS's The Early Show, and on and on. There's there's so many appearances. Uh, Just Google her, and when you Google her, you're actually going to see her TEDx's. Her most recent one has over 600,000 views on YouTube, and it just came out a couple of months ago. I just watched it. It's amazing. I highly recommend it. Um, Janine has attained the rank of number one in the inspiration category in the world's top 30 body language professionals. And she's just, she's really fierce. She's dynamic and she's inspirational. And she's going to be your lie detector today to help you find out if your spouse is lying. So we're really excited to have you here today with us, Janine. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. I'm excited to be here, ladies. And thank you for me too. I'm personally very excited because um, I got to meet you at Camp Powerment recently when we were both featured as experts there. We've had Tammy Leader Fuller, the founder of Camp Powerment and former executive producer of many different TV shows, including producing the Today Show and uh, several others. But she was also on our show and um, founded Camp Powerment. So our listeners will be familiar with her. And um, you uh, were presenting on this topic of body language, and and I was presenting on the topic of negotiation. And so I was so excited about how our topics came together. So thank you also for having me in Washington at your Body Language Institute recently. That was Yeah, you killed it. You were awesome. That was so much fun. I loved it. So you've also been featured on Oprah. Or in Oprah Magazine on the topic of how to tell if your spouse is cheating, Mm. which for our listeners is a big deal. Um, People find that their spouse, uh, you know, not 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 just lie about cheating, but they lie about money. They lie about all sorts of things. So you know how to tell if your spouse is lying is really really um, important for people, and I think a hot topic that people will be very very interested in. So we wanted to talk about those golden nuggets that that you give for how to tell if your spouse is lying. The Uh first tip um, is that your other spouse sounds a little funny. Can you tell us about that? Uh, Well, you want to pay attention to their tone and pitch. So uh, over 85% of us, when we're deceptive, we have a change in our tone and pitch. When our tone goes down, like uh, Britney Spears, when Britney Spears was being interviewed by Matt Lauer, two weeks before she filed for a divorce with, from her husband at the time, Kevin Federline, Br- Britney Spears' voice went down really soft and said, no, our marriage is totally fine. As she rubbed her leg all the way down to her ankle in this interview, my, my marriage is fine. Two weeks later, uh, she files for divorce from Ke- Kevin Federline. So sometimes the tone will go down. Sometimes the tone goes up, Rebecca. I've already answered this question two times. This is ridiculous. You're insane. You're so jealous. This is why you have no friends. This is why your friends never call you. So all of a sudden their tone goes up. And often when their tone goes up, it's because you're getting closer and closer to the truth. So they'll channel anger to back you away from finding the truth and getting too close to the truth. And so this becomes this, um, it's called gaslighting. If you're not familiar with the term, it's like you're the crazy person. And, And this is based, this term gaslighting is based on a movie called Gaslight from decades ago where this guy finds treasure in his house and he doesn't want his wife to find it. So he starts blowing out the gas lights. And she's like, I thought that light was just lit. And he's like, no, that light hasn't worked for months. And to make her crazy. Lance Armstrong did this, quite frankly, when people would call him out on taking steroids. Not only did Lance Armstrong then sue you, he won those lawsuits, by the way. There's one particular interview 
where Lance Armstrong is doing this press conference and this guy from, I want to say reporter is from Scotland or Ireland, I think he's from Scotland, asks Lance Armstrong a question. And Lance Armstrong uh, answers the question and said, and the guy goes, how come you didn't grant us an interview? And, he, and Lance says, um, aren't you the guy from Scotland? Aren't you the guy that's been, been, that's been saying, um, I'm the cancer? I'm the cancer in this sport because I, you think I'm cheating in the, in, in the sport and taking steroids. You call me a cancer and I'm here trying to fight to save money, raise money for cancer awareness to make a difference. And you had the audacity to say, I'm the cancer in the sport. You're not worth the wood you're sitting on on that chair. And so what this was is Lance Armstrong is literally raising his tone and pitch and gaslighting that guy when later we find out what Lance Armstrong was lying all the time. So when you hear yeah, that- Yeah, I was going to say, how many years later was he sitting on Oprah's so, uh, sofa? Yeah. 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 So when someone, if you're asking someone a question, you know, ask me if I've, ask me if I've ever taken heroin, guys. Have they you ever you. taken heroin? No. I don't have to oversell. Truthful people convey, liars try to convince. So pay attention to that tone change. Uh, if all of a sudden there's this either increase in anger or there's this increase in sadness um, and their voice goes soft. Say that again, what you just said. That's a really good, yeah. So if there's this increase in no, anger. No, truthful, truthful people. Oh, truthful people convey, liars try to convince. So oh, they'll oversell it. their story to convince you. That is a good one because I, I think I've noticed that as well. You know, as divorce attorneys, I think Rebecca and I have been lied to a couple of times in our lives, um, right to our faces, as a matter of fact. By our clients. Times. By our own clients, exactly. <laughs> and you do start to pick up some, some clues on it. Um, besides that change in pitch, I know another thing that you say is that people slip in verbal cues, um, which, you know, that sounds like it rings a bell for me, but can you tell our listeners a little bit more about verbal cues? So there's several here. I know you, I know this is going to sound strange, but I know you think I'm making this up, but I know you think I'm lying, but I know you're going to think I'm, I'm not telling the truth, but so pay, I say liars are watching your big butts. Um, <laughs> attention to the butts. Uh, I was on a show called The Big Idea with this guy who I love, Donnie Deutsch. I don't know if you know Donnie Deutsch. So Donnie sure. Deutsch, he had a show on CNBC called The Big Idea. And I told, had Donnie uh, sit down and he told three stories. So the first question was, and he randomly picked out of my hand, one, two, or three. And whichever number he picked, he had to lie on that story. So he couldn't be prepared for which story would be the lie. So I said, I'm pick one, two, or three, whatever number you pick, that will be your lie. And then I asked him three random questions. So the first question was, the first place you ever lived away from home? He said sleep away camp, and the second place was college. The second question was, what drives you mad? What drives you crazy? What drives you mad? And he said, people who are cheap, people who are late, and people who smell bad. And he said, you know, not so much, I mean, people who are cheap, it just drives him, you know, it, it irritates him. But people who are late, which I'm always late, as Rebecca can tell you, case in point today, uh, <laughs> it's like always one thing after another. People who are late drive him, that's his like biggest pet peeve on planet Earth. So he tells me that. The third question is the nicest thing someone ever said to you. And he said to me, literally right out of the gate, he said, the nicest thing someone ever said to me was my father told me I remind him of his father. I know that sounds strange, but that doesn't sound strange. Why would you throw a butt in there? If anything, that sounds completely normal. So his father said, you remind me of my dad. Why is that strange? I know that sounds strange, but so before I even get any body language immediately out of the gate, I'm suspicious of story three because he threw in that big butt. The butt didn't belong there. He didn't say butt there. Hey, the first place I ever lived away from home was sleepaway camp, and then I went to college. I know that sounds strange, but those are the two places I've lived. He didn't say it in the second story, the things that drive him nuts. He only said it here, and it totally makes sense. The nicest thing my father ever said is I remind him of his father. The fact that he added the butt right there is suspicious to me. There's other verbal indicators, and one of them is uh, character testimony. So character testimony is, um, just ask my friends. They'll tell you I'm not a cheater. Just ask my friends. They'll, they'll tell you I'm not smoking anymore. Just ask, ask my boss. Ask my boss on the trip. If I, if I went out at all without the group on the business trip, just ask my boss. He'll tell, he'll tell you I was with the group the whole entire time. 
So this is character testimony. We, Herman Cain, I don't know if you remember Herman Cain. Do you remember him? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he ran for president a couple of years back. And I loved Herman Cain because he was so fun to watch for a detecting deception expert because he gave character testimony in the third person about himself. Kind of like Bob Dole used to say, Bob Dole, you know, Bob Dole would always say, Bob Dole doesn't think this is a good idea. Well, this guy, Herman Cain, running for president, he was charged with like sexual harassment charges came up against him. Not charges, but, uh, you know, people came forward. Allegation, allegation. Yeah, allegations. Thank There's you. a lawyer word. There's a lawyer yeah. word. Thank you, lawyers. <laughs> uh, so uh, he said, Herman Cain would never do something like that. And Herman Cain is not the type of man. And I'm like, dude, Herman Cain is giving character testimony for himself. So anytime someone, you're confronting your significant other, and they start giving character testimony, your BS barometer should start to go crazy. That and the butts, right? That and the butts. And <laughs> the other, things butts. Like, I, other things like, um, I knew this was going to happen. I knew you were going to ask me this. I knew this was going to happen. Or they'll say, um, what kind of person do you think I am? Are you calling me a liar? Are you calling me a liar? Why are you, why are you asking blah, blah, blah the same question? This is ridiculous. You're embarrassing yourself. So again, that goes into these types of statements go into that, uh, you know, trying to make you think that you're crazy, trying to make you gaslight you. So be careful of people. You confront someone and all of a sudden you feel like you're the idiot. You know, you're like, wait a minute, am I insecure? Uh, you know, mammals, mammals, out of all mammals, the only mammal on planet Earth to override our gut instincts are human beings. A wolf never walks down the street or through the woods and says, ah, I think I have a bad vibe. That, that lion over there looks dangerous. Eh, I'm overanalyzing it. And then walks <laughs> by the lion. You know, it's us, human beings. We override our gut instinct and we can be, especially us women, we can be manipulated pretty easily because we're, they, here's the deal. When someone is lying to us, your husband or your significant other, here's the deal. If they have any power at all, and this could be they're very handsome, they have a successful job, they pay the bills, they manage the accounts. You may make more money, but they manage all the accounts. If they have any position of power in your relationship and in your marriage, here's what happens when they lie. When they lie to you, they have a, fo they have a focus on the rewards of lying. They have a focus on the rewards. The everyday liar that lies to you, they focus on the consequences. But your significant other, when they lie, if they are in a position of power at all in your relationship, I'm telling you, they're focusing on the rewards. That's number one. Number two, there's four things that happens with them. One, they focus on the rewards. Two, in the moment of lying to you, they get off on it, ladies. So what happens is they have an increase in cognitive thinking, which means that when one lie doesn't work, they can get tell another lie really quickly it, with ease, like this. You're like, wait a minute, you told me you were with Mike. Oh, no, 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 I didn't meet M Mike, I meant Jeff. Sorry, it was Mike a couple weeks ago. And they're so fast, you're like, there's no way they could lie because they got it so quickly because they have that ability to have an increase in cognitive thinking. And why is that? In a moment of a powerful person lying, they have a decrease in cortisol. The everyday liar has an increase in cortisol, right? That, that hormone that's connecting with stress. They have a decrease in cortisol. They're getting off on it. And the last thing is the powerful liar has an increase in positive emotions. So when you say to your husband, did you see your ex-girlfriend last night at that party? Because a friend of mine was there and she told me <laughs> that love Michelle was there. And he's like, what? I love you. What? <laughs> I love you. So I understand yeah. they have an increase in positive emotions. What are you talking about? Honey, I love you. And they're so happy. Be concerned when you see this. And we're all powerful liars. Have you ever told your kid there's a Santa Claus? Yeah. Your <laughs> uh, we can't go to Grandma Poppy's house because they don't have a fireplace. And what do you do? You slap a smile on your face. <laughs> what? Oh, you're right. You have an increase in cognitive thinking. Oh, I didn't know how to tell you this, but Santa, just like he gives the um, magic dust to the reindeers to fly, he puts magic dust around Grandma Poppy's house and the house lifts up and Santa crawls underneath. Your kid doesn't believe that lie. What do you do? You slap a smile on your face again. You go, okay, Santa shrinks down to the sides of a keyhole with all the <laughs> presents. Your kid doesn't buy that? What no, do you it reminds do? me of that Dirty John thing. Did you um, see that Dirty John thing? Because- no. 
Oh, it, it was this um, podcast series that had gotten like 10 million downloads in like the first six weeks or something. Yeah. And then they ended up making it into a Netflix movie. And we actually Bravo. just yeah. um, in, interviewed um, Lily Vasilev because she has put together um, some points about how to prevent that from happening to you. But it, it was this guy who was a master at getting women to pay for everything for him. They, they would isolate. And, well, and he, he ended up being murdered by, by her daughter. I, Ooh, you give just it gave away. away. Oh, give no. It away. <laughs> give it away for people. But, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert. But uh, he was such a master at getting this very successful woman to do whatever he wanted. Wow. And she said, like, you know, he said he was a doctor and then they found his nursing degree. And, and he came along and said, well, I have a, a a nurse anesthetist doctorate and that's like a doctor and that's why I, I am a doctor and she believed it and you know he would she said he would have something to say for everything and it all sounded plausible which is yeah. exactly what you're saying yeah. right and, i mean so, and think about it when like if you're telling your kid about santa or the easter bunny or the tooth fairy you feel you focus on the rewards you have an increase in positive emotions. You have an increase in cognitive thinking and you don't stress out. As a matter of fact, you're proud of yourself when you finally came up with, okay, I leave the back door open for Santa. Don't tell him my coffee, you know, and your kid buys it and you're like, you call all your friends. You're like, listen, I came up with four answers. I'm like a rock star. So uh, we're all powerful liars. If you can think in your marriage, if you're getting a divorce, if you're separated and they have a position of power, this is happening right now with a relative of mine that got a divorce attorney, right? I helped pay so he wouldn't know that she already got a divorce attorney because he monitored all the finances, right? right. So I pay, I, she paid me back later. I wasn't in a hurry for the money. She paid the money so he wouldn't know. Guess what? Once she serves the papers to file for divorce, he convinces her now they're using a moderator. Well, now this divorce, supposedly, supposed divorce is now going on I don't know, six months and nothing is happening and it's chaos and he's calling all the shots and it's and there's kids involved. The whole thing is a big mess. And now he convinced her to get rid of the lawyer. So all that money was, I mean, and it's crazy. So she's crying and stressed every single day because he convinced her that the lawyers are not a good option. All they're going to do is raise your money and, and give you a big bill. Use a mediator. And I'm not knocking mediators. Maybe there's a time and a place for that. But this is a disaster. Well, that that's a normal thing that can, can control freaks do, though. Um, they they try to get rid of you know even if it's a consulting attorney, which we always say that you know having a consulting attorney or a coach is a good idea. But um, that's what they do. They they convince the person that you don't need that person because they want to get anyone else who might have control over that person out of the picture. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, the lawyer themselves, when we went in, it's a female lawyer, and when we went in, I went in and met with the lawyer as well, and I had a list of questions, and uh, the lawyer, this, my, this is my friend, my friend's husband wrote a list and said, hey, when we get divorced, here's what I get, here's what you get. He writes this list. They and my always friend, my, do that. <laughs> my friend goes, well, that looks fair, and we bring it into the lawyer. She goes, uh, there's six red flags in this list, and my friend's like, what do you mean there's six red flags? I go, this is why you get a lawyer. And so we went in. One of the things was he has all this property. And he said, well, there's no way that we can find out how much money this property is all worth. So I'll take all that property and you'll get none of that. Like, you don't need any of that. I'll take the hassle of it all. And she's like, no, you can get property because multiple people own the property. Like there's a team of families that own it. He's like, there's no way you could figure it out. Of course, there's a way you figure it out. That's ridiculous. But my oh, yeah. friend was like, well, it makes sense. No, no, it doesn't. Oh, they always right? come in with that spreadsheet of like, I've yeah, done this and you're getting the left-hand side and never mind that the right-hand side that I'm keeping tallies a little bit more money. It's yeah. Totally oh, do they fair. do that, huh? Is that typical? Oh, yeah. I uh, see it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so one yeah. of the other things you mentioned yeah. is the person's face flashes contempt. Um, I want you to talk about that, but also... Um, I remember that you said something about like when people lie, something happens with their, their physiological and that's why their nose starts itching and things like that. You can talk about that a little bit too. Okay. So see this look, I, I'm doing contempt while you brought it up. So do this ladies. 
Okay. So that's moral superiority. Let me see, Susan. Let's see it. Oh, yeah, you're good at it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rebecca. Oh, no. Rebecca's a monster. So contempt is moral superiority. Now, contempt belongs there, ladies, if, if uh, someone gets an award, right? Your husband comes home, and he gets this big award and this big trophy, and he's like the top salesperson of the year. It belongs there because it's moral superiority. It's like he's saying, like, you're damn right I'm, I won the award because I worked my butt off. The problem with contempt is where you're confronting them. Hey, did you... Did you, are you on Twitter with a fake Twitter handle um, and then writing to like these women, like, like whores online on Twitter and, and commenting under your fake handle? And your husband's like, no, what are you talking about? I don't even use Twitter. And then contempt pops up. Contempt is moral superiority. When you see contempt as well, so contempt is usually done by the master manipulator. Uh, so someone in the position of power will leak that contempt. So we saw people like uh, uh, Ted Bundy leaks contempt, leaked contempt. Uh, we yeah. saw Scott Peterson, who murdered his wife, pregnant wife Lacey Peterson, and unborn son Connor. Even with interviewing with him, you see contempt, moral superiority. Uh, O.J. Simpson. So people in a position of power. Uh, if, if you're married to a husband that maybe doesn't have a lot of power, right? So uh, you might see this one. So they'll do this, or they'll ventilate. So men will go like this with their hand, with their hair. So uh, like brush it is, back? Yeah, so like, think our brain is inside here. So when there's a, a spike in stress and anxiety, um, the higher the stress and anxiety, the, the higher this self-touch gesture will happen. It's called, a, a guy named Joe Navarro, retired FBI agent, calls them um, uh, pacifiers. Like a newborn baby uses a pacifier to comfort themselves. A guy named Dr. Uh, Dr. Paul Ekman calls them manipulators. I call them self-touch gestures. They're all the same. So the higher the self-touch gesture, the more of a spike in stress and anxiety. So you're confronting your significant other, with whether you're married to a man or a woman, and they are doing this. That's an increase in stress and anxiety. The one so I just... I just want to explain for our listeners who can't see what you're doing, um, that you're, you know, you're rubbing your arm or, or rubbing your hand over the top of your head, just so that they understand that these are the gestures that you're right. talking about. Yeah. Yes. And, and so these, the ventilating one is when you, that, that usually done by men where they make their hand almost into a comb and they go from the forehead back to their hair and they, they ventilate. So this is literally letting steam off their scalp because there's such stress and anxiety. So us women, when we're stressed, so if you're in a, in a same-sex marriage um, and you're confronting her, um, your, your wife, um, the, your palm will go from your neck to the top of your head. So you'll see women do this. We lift our hair up from the nape of our neck. And the more you see them do this, the higher the stress and anxiety is. So if you see women, and this is whether, even if you're not getting a divorce, you're in a, in a negotiation, you know, Rebecca and I just did this negotiation course. So you're in a negotiation, women will tend to go from the nape of the neck up and we, we bent our hair, we let our hair out. So we're going from the nape of the neck up and men will go from the top down. Uh, this is a very good point here. So your powerful liars will leak contempt. Your not powerful liars will often do these ventilating moves. Um, also, if someone is nodding their head, yes, and I didn't give this to Oprah Magazine, but I'm going to give it uh, to you guys, Rebecca and Susan, and your listeners and your viewers, is if someone is shaking their head, yes, we walk out of that negotiation with the meet moderator or with the attorney or whoever, with your therapist, if you're going to family therapy or couples therapy, and your husband goes, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I'll make sure I tell our you know, oldest son to respond to your text messages. I'll make sure. And, I, and your husband or your significant other is nodding yes. I'm here to let you know, or you're in a nego negotiation. If someone nods their head yes, we think it's agreement. The problem is if there is a pacifier at the same time, it actually turns from agreement to disagreement. And again, a pacifier is a self-touch gesture. I'm rubbing my arm. I'm rubbing my leg. I'm doing this ventilating with my hair. I'm going up from the nape of my neck. Anytime a piece of our body touches another piece. So someone's saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, that sounds good. But they're rubbing their forehead or rubbing their throat. Yeah, okay, I'll make sure that happens. Yes. Yes, I'll go to couples therapy. I'll go to sex therapy. I'll go to rehab for sex therapy. I won't cheat on you again. And you see them nodding yes, but they're grabbing their throat at the same time or rubbing their leg. Understand? That has taken agreement to disagreement, and no one's told us this. And we walk out, and we think we're on the right page. We're fixing our marriage. 
and then you're blindsided because your husband said yes, yes, yes to the therapist or yes, yes, yes to the moderator, mediator, whoever to you. And uh, he didn't do what he said. And you're blindsided. You're like, I don't understand. He said yes in the therapy session. Like I watched him. No, he has given you the nonverbal indicator of nodding his head yes, but the pacifier at the same time indicates right in front of your eyes, ladies, disagreement. You just missed it because no one ever taught you what to look for. Cool, so right? Yeah. Well, now that we know it, <laughs> right. but it also, I think that, um, I think it's fascinating. You know, you're, you're internationally known as a body language expert and, and I have noticed since my practice has moved online. So everybody, when I first started doing mediations online, everyone thought, oh, it's going to lose something in the translation because we're not in the same room. But I've actually found that since you can see each other and it's almost amplified since you're all on the screen, yeah. that the body language still comes through quite strongly yeah. um, and, and it's almost enhanced. Um, and I, you said um, in that article about body language that the other person sort of seems like they're trying to run and hide. And I've noticed that phenomena even yeah. on a screen. So um, what, what do you mean by that? Or can you describe it for our listeners? We'll say it again. What was the tip? The trying to run and hide. So when the body sort of feels like it, it um, you know, the person, the other person's body is trying to run and hide. Yeah. So, and this can show up in different ways, but you, what we're, the moral of the story is from this whole interview is you always want to look for someone's baseline and when their baseline changes, that's where suspicion lies. So if, if I'm really confident and I'm taking up space, if you were to see me right now, you'd see my left arm is up on my chair that I'm sitting at. I'm taking what's called the broadside display. I'm taking up space. And all of a sudden I get really small. I think of like a far side cartoon. I like far side back in the day I'm, I'm an 80 <laughs> uh so as we yeah. all are yeah yes so you you these far side cartoons like the bear would have like a red target on him and he'd get really really small or point to the bear next to him so the person with the gun could go shoot that bear so we implode we sometimes do turtling turtling is where the shoulders kind of pull up and our head pulls down you'll see this with people who shoplift so shoplifters when they go in and they're looking around uh, before they steal will often turtle and turtling just imagine the turtle's head going back into its shell the shoulders will rise up and so you'll see someone sitting here like this it's they're trying to become a smaller target and not be seen versus taking up space so um sometimes people will lean away i i call this uh, the belly button rule the belly button rule is we face our belly button towards people we like admire and trust we also face our belly button and our feet in the direction we want to head so if you're talking to someone, I talked about this on Dr. Oz one time for a divorce segment, ironically, and uh, if so, you're talking to your significant other and they suddenly adjust in their seat, and if you could see me on video, you'd see I just turned. My belly button is now facing a door and exit. I subconsciously want out of there. So I will literally physically turn my belly button towards the door and exit. I have a friend, Terry Moore in New York City, and she always says to her husband, his name's Nikolai, hey, Nikolai. My belly button is facing the door. You know what that means? Let's go, buddy. My belly button's out of here. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> Get behind the belly. <laughs> yes. So watch for that change in the baseline. Watch for when people shrink. Or again, remember, some liars convince instead of convey. So some liars will get opposite and they'll take up space and try to be really confident and start doing steepling, which is like prayer hands. We see Oprah do this steepling move. It's it's literally like the steeple on a church, they'll, they'll try to overcompensate that they have nothing to hide. It's a power move. I learned yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> that and the chin grab. Yes. When we grab our chin, we're about Wait, to win. Is that good? <laughs> okay. Because I do that a lot. Is that a good thing to do? Yeah, or it's a okay. good thing. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> 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 Well, unfortunately, we are just about out of time. I swear we could do five shows with you on all different topics, but um, where can our- Well, before you do my tech, I have to ask Susan a very important question. Yes. Okay. So I'm reading your body language. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to analyze you on two things, okay? Uh-huh. Have you ever given a TED Talk? I have not. And do you want to give one? Sure. Is it something you've thought about in the past? No. You have not thought about it? No, I've actually thought about Rebecca giving a TED Talk. <laughs> okay. So, and has Rebecca told you that you should be giving one or tell me about this? I don't think we've talked about it. 
Okay, the reason I ask you is, so when you introduced me in my bio, when you said I gave a couple TEDx talks, um, you scratched your nose at that particular point. So that intrigued me. And so I want my listeners at home to see what just happened here. I didn't see Susan scratch her nose and just assume, aha, she wants to have a, give a TED talk. Or aha, she's given a TED talk, but it hasn't been watched as many people as she would like. Or aha, um, she applied for a TED talk, but didn't get it. I think the important part on body language and, and understanding the hidden meaning behind certain words is Notice the behavior like Susan scratched her nose and then do what I did, ask questions. Just because your husband um, leaks contempt or your wife leaks contempt, understand it doesn't mean that they're a liar. Just because they use the big butts or, I, or character testimony does not mean they're a liar. Maybe their best friend is cheating on their wife and they're keeping it a secret and they don't want you to know because they're afraid you're gonna tell their best friend's wife. Be careful of becoming a mind reader. Notice the behavior, notice the words, and then ask powerful questions and see how they respond. Susan didn't overcompensate. She didn't try to convince me of something. She just said, no, uh, yeah, sure, I'd love to give a TED Talk. Have you thought about giving one? No, not really. But I've tried to convince, I tried to convince Rebecca to do it. Notice how Susan's baseline remained the same, her tone and pitch remained the same. This is the important part is ask the questions when you see the behavior or hear the words. Does that make sense? And last but not, yes, good. Yes, and then totally. You didn't even know you were going to be part of my experiment. And no, last, I did not. <laughs> before, you, before you say goodbye to me and plug how people can find out more, Susan, are you the type of person that, are you a private person? Do you like to do things on your own? Usually, yes. Yes. Uh, and... So if someone invited you to go to a hockey game and we're all going to this big hockey game, are you excited to go with all these people? Not so much. It's not my usual scene. Yeah, it's not your usual thing. Yeah. Um, and can you go to a movie by yourself or a restaurant by yourself, to lunch by yourself or shopping at a mall by yourself? Oh, I can, t I can shop anywhere at any time under any circumstances, but the rest of it, I don't like to go to restaurants by myself. You don't? No. Okay, so you do a body language move a lot, which is you lean forward and you lean forward with speed. So that's called advancing and accelerating. And so when you lean forward and accelerate, it indicates a lot of information about your privacy to me. And we, I know we're out of time, so I can't tell people at home what to do <laughs> and how to spot this body language movement, but know how you move your body connects to how you make decisions in life. And if you can read these certain 12 moves that all human beings make, you can begin to know more information about them than they want you to know about them. So for <laughs> you, I can see your privacy because you accelerate and advance at the same time. So it says to me, if I invite you to go to lunch with me or to a baseball game and you say no, not to take it personally because you have a private side that's pretty strong. Wow, wow. So wait, now where can people find out about these 12 things? <laughs> I, know, I might need to do some more reading. <laughs> Well, first of all, I just launched today, 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 Tuesday, yesterday, uh, I launched uh, my virtual training, Driver on Demand, and people can get training with me seven days a week, 24 hours a day. I don't even know how many hours of content it is now. I don't, it's over 20, 30 hours of content, but I update constantly every month. We put another couple hours of content in there. So I'm also weighing in on current celebs. So two ways they can connect with me, one, is every Wednesday night I do a Celebrity Lie Detector Live on Facebook, which is Janine, J-A-N-I-N-E, driver, forward slash B-L-I, stands for Body Language Institute. Follow me Wednesday night, 10 p.m. East Coast time, and it's an hour and a half to two hours long every Wednesday night. It's a lot. But wow. I weigh in on whatever's going on in the media and give you some cool strategies on how to be a better negotiator, uh, how to influence people and persuade them, and how to detect deception. And then I put that on YouTube. So if anyone's missed it already, you can go to YouTube and just put in CLD, Celebrity Lie Detector, CLD, Janine Driver, and you can see my nine episodes I've done so far. So that's over 21 hours of content, totally free. If they wanna pay some money and work with me uh, in virtual training where every section is 30 seconds to five minutes long, so you can repeat it, so you can master it. To master something, you need to hear it and do it seven times is the average. Uh, you can go to my website, which is bluestreaktraining.com, bluestreaktraining.com, because a blue streak is a bolt of lightning that changes your life forever. You're outside, there's lightning, you get out of the pool, you stop playing tennis, you stop golfing. And my job, my life's mission is to give people blue streak. 
to give you information so you make smarter decisions and protect your family, your friends, and your finances. And that's what I call Blue Streak. So bluestreaktraining.com. And uh, my name's Jenny Driver. It was fun playing with you ladies. I love you, Rebecca and Susan. It's such a pleasure. I'm glad you're part of my world now. Thank, Thank you. you so much. That is so fun. Thank you. <laughs>